Welcome to the Epcot International Food and Wine Festival 2024. Tom Corliss and Eric Morton here. I can't believe we're here, Tom. I, it's been a long time. I feel like this is my return to Disney World vlogging and blogging. I know, like, Walt famously said, Epcot will always been in a, be in a state of festivals. And it seems like it's been a while since the last one ended. I know. I'm very excited now. Anyway, the, the terror twins of the Epcot festivals are back. We're here, and we're going to start with the first thing that's operating, which is Joffrey's. This is the kiosk uh, between Guardians and, and Mission Space, I'd say, and Connections. Um, they say near Mission Space. It's, I guess it's somewhat accurate, I would say it's closest really. to Connections. But. Yeah, I don't understand this. They also said, they said Coastal Eats is near Mission Space. I don't think that's really near Mission Space either. Um, but anyway, the Coconut Mocha Latte is a decadent blend of espresso, milk, coconut syrup, and dark chocolate sauce garnished with whipped cream, toasted coconut flakes, and dark chocolate drizzle. This is non-alcoholic, mind you. Were they offering an alcoholic version? Sometimes they do that. I didn't see that, didn't but I'm sure they'll the put side. a shot of booze in it for a couple bucks. If you want, yeah. Oh yeah, you could do Bailey's Irish Cream. We did not today, because there'll be a lot of drinking today. Obviously, if it's good without Bailey's, it'll be good with it, right? I mean, coconut on the back end, you get like, Extreme There's a lot of coconut, coconut there at the, the end. I didn't taste it at first. I was like, where's the coconut? The front is just like, coffee. Yeah. It just tastes like burnt coffee up front. And then real real dark coffee. And then on the back, almost as if you ate a king-size mounds bar. This is okay. I, Four. I'm not blown away. It's, yeah. So I will say that when I was at Disneyland last week, I kind of made the averages more like four and a half and five. I went high on a lot of stuff. Yeah. Disneyland food is generally a little better. Um, Counter service at least. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I say it's four like a out four. of seven. Four out of seven. What are we? Out, out of seven, of, what? We did like ghosts for Magic this is King Epcot, Halloween. So this we is did, the seven park, so we don't. Seven figments. Seven chef figments. Four out of, four out of seven chef figments. I'm making Katie work real hard this week. Have fun making those graphics, kids. Sorry. Billy, Billy probably makes it. I don't know. You ready for some rapid fire reviews? Yeah, rapid fire. That's from, my special. From future, team. we're almost at Future World. Uh, About tis, east. Tis, tis. Yeah. Uh, you get the idea. The Mission Space side, the Guardian side. Um, that's why we're sitting in here. Um, Jason went to get whatever's here at Connection, so that'll be coming soon. But in the meantime, the Fry Basket is over by Test Track. It doesn't say that on here because Test Track's closed. So it says near Mission Space, which is a lot. But it's actually almost in Test Track. Uh, the fry basket new this year are truffle parmesan fries. They're available as part of the flight, um, which... So you I have to get the flight to get the new truffle parmesan fries. Yeah. But now I need to remember what the other ones are. They're not on our checklist. Berlin, Do we know the price? Postal. Yeah, this is $8 All right. for three decent orders of fries. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so there's truffle parmesan, barbecue bacon, and sweet potato casserole. The new ones are the truffle parmesan. I assume that yeah. would be truffle parmesan. Yeah, the ones that don't have any sauce. Try the new one first. The new one first. There you go. It's crispy and it's not hot. It just makes me want to go to Ellen Compass. These are served in like a cardboard tray that might be like shareable though. So for eight bucks, you want to share fries with your friends. I don't think it's a bad value for what it is. I know someone at home be like, French fries, eight dollars. They're three decent size. They're heavy too. Mm -hmm. Like they're they're yeah. thick cut. Like it's it's gonna be. Uh, pretty filling so you want to share it with people if you plan on eating more festival food these aren't blowing me away they're not no. bad they're just kind of average they're fine is it is it a four is it five well we got to try the other ones and rate the oh, whole okay so i didn't know we we're just rate, rating no the new let's ones. rate the whole thing okay this one has some of the which one is this, this? must be the bacon one those are fantastic mm -hmm. but you said it right that smoky real smoky flavor like barbecue there's like a liquid smoke or something in that sauce. No. And then there's not much bacon, but... Oh, see, mine didn't have a lot of the sauce, so I almost think the smokiness is coming from the seasoning. Well, here, eat one without... Did they grind bacon? Is that what happened? I think the seasoning consists of, like, grinded, smoky bacon. I don't, I don't know. It's really powdered, hard to tell. Powdered smoke. Some kind of powdered smoke, yeah. Is powdered smoke a thing? I would... Jason says powdered smoke's a thing, and Jason's a... Jason's chemist. a grill master, so... All right, now I have the sweet Anna potato. Christ. Sweet potato, what's it have? What am I getting myself into? Oh, sweet potato. Eric, it is healthier than the other ones, yeah. I want to warn you. Just so, you, just so you're aware. Sure. Yeah, they're 
sweet potato casserole fries with candied pecans, toasted marshmallow cream, and bourbon maple syrup. I'm very oh, I love it. Very much a dessert. Yeah. Maybe have those last. We did it in the right order on accident. I think the two returning ones are better than the new one. Yeah, the new ones are kind of forgettable. The new one kind of weighs it down a little bit. I don't know that weighs it down. It's just not It's not pushing any boundaries, right? It's just I think like this they... would be a seven. Otherwise, those two, if they were alone, those two, I'd give it a seven. I think these are kind of a waste of time. Five and a half? We don't do half. Where does this half come from? I don't know. Let's pick a number. Half is actually if I do five and you do six. I'd say six. And I say five, so it's five and a half. Whatever. We're going to Coastal Eats, which has the cutest booth I've ever seen. It looks all wavy and it has coral on it. Coral! Coral! Uh, this oh, is the roasted coral. warm ro ro mm? roasted warm water lobster tail with garlic butter. How Should much I... did this cost? I had to take out a small business loan before going well, to the They had lobster booth. tail last year and it was really good, but it $13. Is this no, one the, just different? This? Was that my receipt? Yeah. Oh, $13. Okay. $13. Should we just pour this on? I mean, it looks like it's already been swimming in it. Should it you, is. Should you pull it out of the shell before you pour it on? Uh, I don't know. Whatever. It's there. I poured it in the open end. You want to cut into that? I'll just like... I think this end is open. Okay. See, look at... The, hold on. I want to take a photo we of We should have poured the butter. Okay, it's it's all right. It's on the yeah. bottom, which is where it's hanging out. There you go. But how photogenic. The way they handed it to me was not how it's meant to be presented. Let's, let's say that much. It should have been presented this way with the open side, and it was not. That's a nice bit of lobster. Look at that. For 13 bucks? I mean, yeah. lobster? For mm. theme park, $13. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's all the bad taste associated with really cheap lobster. I don't get any of that, like, super fishiness. It tastes reasonably fresh. And, um, I mean, what, it's lobster covered in butter and, like, some spices. It's delicious. See, I almost think that, like... Cheap flavor comes from the seasoning, the, the butter, the garlic butter feels like low quality. And that's like the taste I'm getting is like that sour garlic butter. Oh, um, you don't like the butter? I think that's what's killing it. Otherwise, I think it's a really good lobster. Do you want to squeeze the lemon on top of it? See no. no. <laughs> I, go ahead if you think it'll change it. Dude, it's great. I, oh, I like it. It's a seven. You think it's a seven? Yeah, it's a seven. I'm going six. Okay. Either way, I still think it's worth getting. I don't think it's perfect. I think the the flavor could be elevated a little bit. I just think mm -hmm. for the value for a lobster tail, yeah. 13 bucks. All right, here at Connections Eatery, we have two new offerings. The Korean barbecue chicken sandwich. Uh, there you go. Mom's got it, it comes with fries. Uh, it's with or pickled. coleslaw, or, but they gave both. us both. They felt bad about that, I don't know. I don't know, they're, they're um, learning, it's the first one. And a brioche bun. It goes for twelve dollars and forty-nine cents. A lot of pickled cuc. I'm sorry, if I blew the description. Korean barbecue sandwich with pickled cucumbers and a brioche bun for twelve forty-nine. That should be a regular counter service item. Why don't they have this all the time? Not Korean style. They have a they have a pretty I said, decent why don't they have chicken this all the sandwich. Time? Yeah. Um, that's real sweet. A legitimate spice with the sweetness. The bun yeah. is perfect. It's buttery, flaky. Um, the chicken again, real, real thick cut, white meat, perfectly cooked. Juicy. We got the first one they've served for the festival, yeah. right? We, we pre-ordered this a while back. They're all back there watching the chef prepare this stuff. We pre-ordered it at the so. Disney store. It came with four lithographs and a pin. <laughs> in fact, that's for the fellow old people out there, like Jason, will understand what I'm talking it's Jason about. Jason laughing in the distance. <laughs> we had to pre-order today just to pick up that. Um, I'm not laughing because pins are the bane of my existence now that these two are... It's a seven. Seven. It's a seven. Yeah, seven. Absolutely. Juicy, good flavors. Now, mind well you, it's a full counter service meal, right? It's yeah. fried. You get a side and a sandwich. Um, That's the real silverware they give us. You can share it, but I'm telling you, like, basically, it's, it's a counter service meal. So keep that in mind if you're going to be, you know, trying things around the world and want to save some space throughout the day. So this is a Blackberry Kaiperoska. Tito's what? handmade Kaiperosca. I've so, never heard of this before. So Kaiperina is like a Brazilian drink. Yeah. And I think there's a take on that, but instead of Russian? using instead of using like cachaca or rum, they're using vodka, in this case Makes Tito's. It 
So I assume this is a thing that existed and that it's a name Disney has, has taken on, but if you make it with vodka, they give it like a Russian-esque name. It's like you make an Arnold Palmer is lemonade and iced tea, but if you put vodka in it, it becomes a John Daly. Right, if you switch things yeah. out, you change the name. So I'm guessing that's what they're going for. It's What's vodka, the so that's cut? Russian. Pre-ordering a movie at the Disney store or John Daly? What's the deal? I don't know. Uh, and Tito's handmade vodka, Minute Maid lemonade, strawberries, blackberry syrup, and frosted mint syrup. This is typical festival junk. Very sweet and sticky and syrupy. Not wild about it. Look, every festival I say something tastes a little bit like medicine. <laughs> it, it's not bad. I actually don't hate it. There Allie, is that can we get a medicine second opinion? Syrup. Yeah, we need Allie's here. We have everybody here. She no, said, Allie doesn't. It's bad. Okay. I don't like it at all. Cool. That is, that that confirms that it's bad. I don't she hate it. She just drank it again after just making a wincing face. No, it tastes like but medicine. Tastes like medicine. Uh, one. Yeah, med this is a medicine. One. One out of seven. Jason is sitting in now for Nana finally returned with flavors from Fire, which has two sliders for us. The first of which is an impossible Montreal-style burger slider with cheddar and tomato jam on a sesame seed bun for $6. And Eric refused to eat this. So Eric walked away because here. someone said there was a vegan dish, so he walked away. <laughs> I assume it's vegan. Does it have the, or is it just vegetarian? I mean, it's, oh, got it's cheese. It has the. Is it vegan cheese? The leaf, is, yeah, it definitely looks like it. It's not melted. Well, that's just because it's cold. Does the leaf, the leaf means vegan, plant-based, yeah. So it is vegan. It is vegan. Do you want to try it first? Do you want to cut it? You can. You have the utensils right Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely vegan cheese. It's, it's, it's plastic. It's remained the same texture as when it was prepared. I think that's really good. I think it's good. I, I don't like the cheese, but I, I don't like fake cheese. I don't know that vegan people like the cheese. I think they just deal with it. Yeah. But it's good overall. I'd give that a... A, a solid five. I was going to say the same thing. Yeah. Five out of seven. I think if you're vegan, it's probably going to be a seven out of seven. Oh, I think I would you're say. absolutely going to love yeah. it. Yep. Given how few options you have at the event, I think you'll love that. Next up is the Steakhouse Blended Burger, which is beef and wild mushroom slider with truffle brie cheese fondue, arugula, and truffle potato chips on a sesame seed bun. So there is, so there is a just potato a chip. potato chip. It's got a potato chip on it. You cut that one? The cheese is perfect. Yeah. Because you get, I mean, it's real mushroom forward. And that cheese hits that, it's perfect. This is, this is, this is an early contender for like top seven of the festival. Yeah, for sure. This is a seven out of seven. Absolutely. Yep. Agreed. Must, must get. Uh. Yeah, everything, it's cooked perfectly. The mushroom flavor. Uh, obviously, if you don't like mushrooms, I'm this not going to recommend be it because it very much <laughs> tastes like mushrooms oh, and absolutely. beef. Um, but it's fantastic. The bun, nice and soft. These sesame buns are new, aren't they? I don't recall these from another. I don't event. ever remember. If a they sesame did, I remember. Bun. Maybe there was a year they did them and they they really like they were crisp. They yeah. were destroyed. Um, so I, I like these them. sesame buns are great. We're now in Hawaii. I wish, uh, but. But the Hawaii booth, Ali, who's now used to be a Disneyland reporter, but now is a Disney World reporter because you moved from LA to here. Yeah. So questioning my life choices, but we're here. Anyway. Could have moved to Hawaii, but I chose Florida. Well, the food's cheap, even festival food cheaper here. So <laughs> a good decision. Uh, so new in Hawaii was the Hawaiian rice bowl, which is spam, eggs, eel sauce, spicy mayonnaise, and furikake. And you wanted to eat here because your husband is Hawaiian. Husband is native Hawaiian, I can already tell you. This is not gonna go well, but we'll give it a try. Um, just because we throw spam and everything doesn't make it Hawaiian, and the Hawaiians do not do spicy foods. But yeah, the only flavor is coming from the furikake. The spam chunks are way too big. And just Mostly because- salt. Yeah, it's just salt, salt and because the furikake is all salty, it's just salt in one note. That's not good. Do not get that. One. Oh. One out of seven. Yeah, Don't. Oh. bad. Get the cheesecake. And yeah, that's they, old, but the cheesecake's good. And the Alani Sunrise is great. There you go. You said you hate this booth, and you got two things from it, and you like These them. are okay. These are kind of authentic. Shimmering Sips presented by, or hosted by, Corksicle. We have two new items. There is a berry mimosa first, which is La Giosa, La Giosa berry fizz and white cranberry juice. 
It tastes kind of like sparkling red wine. I mean, that's definitely the one with cranberry juice. Yeah. Yeah. I it think tastes like sparkling wine and cranberry juice. Yeah. I mean, pretty simple, but it's inoffensive. Delicious. It's good. Yeah. Four, five. Nice and crisp. I'll give it a five. All right, five. That's fine. Uh, and then we have the fruited sour beer, which was Jason's nickname in college, I believe, and the sparkling <laughs> wine cocktail, which is uh, brewery. Omegang? Yeah. Brewery Omegang Dream Patch Fruited Sour with cherry, blueberry, and raspberry and sparkling wine. By design, but... That gave me instant heartburn. <laughs> I do feel it right here. I, I don't... It's like a three. There's nothing going... I, either I there's, either there's so much three. going on that it numbed all my senses. It has no memorable aftertaste at all. Yeah. It just feels... You, you get like a... An aftershock. Sparkling from the wine texture. and heartburn. Yeah, sparkling wine and heartburn. Uh, we're at the Brewing Lab in the Odyssey, which has a great photo op this year where it looks like you're working at Muppet Labs. It's directly behind us. We'll go look at it after. Uh, so, last year, my favorite thing to do was to punish myself once a week and get whatever those unnecessarily spicy wings were. Apparently, they're changed or something happened this year because we're getting them again. Uh, but they're the unnecessarily spicy yet extremely tasty Carolina Reaper pepper curry wings. I don't know what's different from last year, but these are these are pretty gnarly from what I remember. They're playing the right clip right now too. I think it's them eating these. No, you're absolutely right, Beaky. Very hot. I'm gonna blow smoke out of my ears like Beaker in about three seconds. These are very hot. I would say like if we were on hot ones, this would be like the fourth question. I don't actually like the way that the They're sauce so like is attached. Like I wish it was a little bit more like grilled into the wing. It's actually sort of like a weird layer, like a paste it's real on there. Chunky. Yeah, like a chunky paste. It's not. They look like they're kind of cooked on there, but it's actually like a chunky paste you can probably scrape off. I don't know what you're supposed to say other than yeah, they're really hot. The they're not terrible. Good. I like the flavor. I'm gonna eat a little bit of a runny nose. I don't think I give it a seven because it's just gonna no. ruin someone's day. I give them a six. I like them. Yeah, look, you eat them here. There's a clear shot to the bathroom in case things you get bad. You need a pickle milkshake with this. Yeah. Well, you're out of luck this year. We do have Joffrey. Can we jump to Joffrey's after that? Because I yeah. need a drink. Anything's going to taste really good now. So this is going to be the Joffrey's by... How did they by define Disney this Traders? One? By Disney Traders, so out in yeah. the middle of the promenade. And this is the PB and J uh, latte, delicious blend of espresso, milk, peanut butter syrup, and raspberry syrup, oh, garnished yeah. with whipped cream. It has been sitting in here while the whipped cream is starting to. Well, that's how I feel internally yeah. right now. It's starting to get a little low on the whipped cream. I did take beautiful photos of video outside. Maybe those. Will come Go ahead. Through. I don't know what's going on with Joffrey's this year. Usually, I really love their stuff. But all of it just feels like flavoring in bad coffee this I year, and I like Josh's I don't coffee. I don't hate it. It's just kind of like a couple pumps of flavor here. But this would have been better if they had... It like I made them. It would like be I better. I didn't know what amount of stuff to put in. Some screwball whiskey would have been good to put in here. What was it? They were doing Bailey's, This is non-alcoholic. This is non-alcoholic. But on the menu, it's you could like add Bailey's. Bailey's. Yeah. But well, you're right. Screwball would be fantastic. It's been good with screwball and like Chambord. Yeah. I just... Yeah, spirit aversion with Bailey's. It's just okay. It's a it's three. Okay. It's maybe a three. It's a four after the wings, but I think on a general day, walking through the promenade, it's like a three. Fried ba back to the Odyssey. Oh boy. Fried pickle spears with dill ranch. Oh boy. Grab one. You go first. A little bit of pickle in there. It's all right. I, it's not special. I like it. It's like a four, but you want? I give it a five. It's a spot. A five. Um, talk me through the five, and let me see if I can change my vote. Lee says so, five. It's a five. Lee says if Lee says it's a five. I mean, it's a standard fried pickle. It's a standard fried pickle. Yeah, I don't know that this dill cream does anything for it. I like it. All right, now to the Australia tent. Oh boy, it's a tent this year. Yeah, because the booth isn't done yet. It's sitting there. The booth is sitting there. It's not ready yet. Grilled 
Cushberry Spiced Shrimp Skewer with sweet and sour vegetables and coconut chili sauce. Oh good, another spicy item. Yeah, those are solid. There it is. The spike to be spork. Surely this is the spork of never. <laughs> So here's the problem, right? There's a lot of seasoning on this, but I can't taste it at all because my tongue is still scalded from the Carolina Reaper. It's a, it's a sweet chili. It's like um, a sweet chili. It's, it's actually dulling the pain from the Carolina Reaper. Yeah. Um, let's try the vegetables. This will be our first yeah, vegetable today. Yeah, it's not fresh off the grill, right? It's been sitting here for a few minutes. It's kind of all low quality. Like it feels like a cheap dish. I don't know. I bet um, it wasn't. I bet it wasn't. I don't have the price in front of me. Jason, you have it? Three? Yeah, it's really basic. I, I think it's pretty basic. It's inoffensive. It's Their basic. old shrimp on the Barbie was really good, though. And it but was hot. the it shrimp was... calculator. Yeah. Seven. Seven dollars? Oh, that is for That's five shrimp? That's price. That's not bad, then. That's pretty good. I don't know what anything is. A tostada. A flauta. A pan. They always have a flauta and a tostada. And a margarita. Is that just a potato? Oh, I love the spicy potato taco from Taco Bell. <laughs> That's great. It's actually my favorite item. I'm trying to find Mexico. Is this a spicy potato taco on like the dollar menu? It is. It's fantastic. They're delightful. You should have them. Uh, so, uh, as usual, Mexico has changed their whole menu, so we have three new food items and two new drinks to talk about, including the tostada de camarones, which is tempura battered shrimp atop a fried corn tortilla with guacamole, cabbage, chipotle aioli, diced mango, and chili lime powder. I like the batter they use for the shrimp. No, you don't like it? That's better tempura than I've had from the Japan Pavilion. <laughs> It's good. Yeah, they did a good job. I like their batter. They're excellent. I don't know, the tostada and the accompaniments are fine. It's fine. But the, they, they really did a nice job with the shrimp. They're real plump, they're very juicy, they're good size. How about a six? Yeah. I know, he's just moving on. It's the flauta. Flauta de barbacoa, Ooh, fried tortillas man. filled with bar... Excuse me. To experiment with new food and beverages. To uh, fried tortillas filled with barbacoa like beef topped with salsa verde, crema mexicana, and queso fresco. Oh, it tastes a little pedestrian, it's a little basic. It's got a nice kick though. I still think it's like a five. Yeah. I agree with you. Pedestrian, basic, but sometimes you want, you, everyone's not coming here just, what's the most sophisticated thing I can have at the food and wine? Lobster, Lobster tail. Right? Are we ready? Can this I cut into this pan, without you freaking out? Pan de elote, a traditional Mexican cornbread topped with chocolate sauce and queso fresco. Weird. Looks good. It's confusing. It took me a minute because I taste them in sequence, right? So first I get the richness there of that dark that chocolate, don't feel like they then should I get like together. a sweetness of the cornbread, and then I'm like, is that cheese, cheese. on this? <laughs> I love this. I think seven because it's yeah, different, I'll, right? I think I, I want to I want to say seven, but I'm also like trying. It comes early in the roster. I'm trying to reserve some room. But this is different, right? Like people are gonna have this. Be like, I've never had anything like. This. I think it's a it's. Give it a six point five. It's better. No, Tom doesn't like that. No decimals. Oh, no decimals. Okay. We can do a decimal. Tom says seven, and I say six. But okay, I'll go seven. You've convinced me. I think. And for I its still taste it. It's getting and better. How interesting it is! I think it deserves. Here, I'll let People Lee taste try it. it. Lee is a really good. Let's right. ruin it. Let's ruin it with their drinks. Mango Sunrise Margarita. Be positive. Dos hombres mezcal. Centinella tequila, mango puree, and black currant liqueur, and a chili lime salt rim. Hey, wait, it's got mezcal and tequila in it? Yes. Oh, God. It actually does taste like chloroseth. It tastes like chloroseth. Sometimes I think we say please. that just because it's bad. It actually I'm not saying it to be funny. Has this the happens a lot in the Mexico food. Chloroseth. Mm. Like the fuzzy tauntaun, you know, mouth thing. But like not fuzzy. I don't like this cow though. So. I don't like two. Yeah, that Since some people thought so it was okay, we give it a two. 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 It's a two. We'll be back shortly. Poblano margarita. Lalo tequila blanco. 
a, a, bas, a basalo corn whiskey, lime juice, and ancho reyes verde chili poblano liqueur with a salt rim. There's a lot going on. There's, There's a lot happening. Whiskey, tequila blanco, a poblano, poblano pepper, pepper, chili poblano liqueur. liqueur. Yeah. I mean, it tastes like a margarita. I don't like, like good margarita, margarita, so I'm the wrong person. Based on how people yelled at Nana for her corn dog reviews, they're going to yell at me now for my margarita review. I don't I, hate it. I so hate it. here's my thing. Go to yeah, go to Choza across the way and just get one of their good margaritas yeah, they serve every just day. Just don't get one from the, the festival booth. one. Go, is, go to one of the places that sells them every day. It is better These than the are course, watered down. Like They're going to be slightly less watered down from the real. Location. I'll give it a three because it's slightly better than they the like course. It, so yeah. Yeah, sure. That's it. Mexico. Some, uh, some food hits, was good some this misses. year. Yeah. All right. China. Uh, we have a crispy duck bao bun with hoisin sauce for $8.25. It's a little small for $8.25. It's not bad. It's nice and tender. The sauce Tasty. is good. The bao is good. The meat tastes like nothing. Yeah, you really oh. just get the sweetness of the sauce. The bao is cooked well. It's nice and soft. Um, the meat is flavorless. There's sauce on it to help, but... It's solid. It's not great. Uh, for $8.25. Uh, four. Four. All right. Okay. More shrimp. This looks good, though. Uh, this is the Shanghai Scallion Noodles with shrimp for eight fifty. This looks better than it tastes. Yeah. The shrimp is weird. The shrimp's like a little not weird. fully cooked. That yeah, it's chewy. It's microwaved and it's not fully microwaved. It's two. I'm, I'm, gets run over I forgot it. Disneyland, I was trying to be nice. I was trying to not give twos out too often. A lot of threes and fours, though. This is the mango peach bubble tea. It's green tea, mango, and peach syrups with white boba. Whenever you get this big straw in your drink, you know there's boba. It's the best thing from this booth. <laughs> That's not true everything. because we didn't get the returning things, which those two returning drinks are very beloved. It's the best new thing from this booth. Yes. By the way, disclosure time, very because tart. we forgot to add this earlier. Disney is uh, did up. give us a $100 gift card, so yeah. you'll, you can add up the price of everything we eat. Sorry you see we we're spending because, a lot more than one. Because I think that's one-seventh of what we're going to buy today. Right, you'll see that we're spending a lot more than $100, but, but $100 you, is a Disney gift yeah. card. So it's worth noting that... That ran out about five booths ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This is still like a four. I think people will like this. Are you saying that's a five? Let me see what Jason thinks. I'm not a big Jason likes guy. everything. I feel sweet. like people will love it. What would you give it? Five. All right, five. Jason says five. Wendy said, "I'm going low. Five. You go high." <laughs> Lee, would you like to? I think we got five. Lisa, I no. think we're okay. gonna we're gonna land Fine. on five. Fine, it's a five. It's, it's a nice five. and refreshing. If the weather is gonna be like this, it's, it's a nice refreshing. This is a two. Three or four. This is I don't remember. I don't, what do we say this one? Three. It's hot out. I don't remember. Hey, we said three. I don't know. So. I don't know what we said. Either way, Katie this, can add our figment chef figments. Just go get the old drinks. Room. Don't get if these. You're going to China. If if you got to get something to drink, get that. Yeah. So this is uh, this is refreshment outpost, which is going to be Africa ish. Yeah. Um, but yeah, impossible spicy sausage with piri piri peppers, onions, and a piri piri aioli. This is a lot of Sanaa and Animal Kingdom Lodge going on here, which it I'm sure excited is. about. My favorite. Is it the same sausage they have everywhere? It's a spicy it tastes sausage. Different. I it don't tastes know. spicier. I don't actually you don't like think it that's that the much. Sauce? I think that's the sauce. It may be the sauce. I don't know. It's not bad for six fifty. It's a good portion size. It's for six fifty, and again, size. like if you're a vegan, you don't have so a lot many, of so options. Many options. But I mean, it's solid five. Yeah, five. I'm all right with five. Yeah. It's a good value. All right, the other one is the curry chicken and South African Bowers sausage stew with chickpeas and potatoes served in a bread bowl. <laughs> and by bread bowl, they mean a house roll that was carved, <laughs> carved out. I think spoon for this. <laughs> Earthy, grainy flavor. It's good. I like yeah. it. Yeah. I'd give it a four or five. I go five. Yeah. Okay. But it's not. It's a pretty hefty I mean, it's heavy. Yeah. No. But what I'm excited about is 
is this monster this zebra is dome. This essentially a zebra dome. For those that are unfamiliar, if you go to Boma or um, even just to like the grab and go at, at Mara. Uh, the Mara. Well, not just the Mara, I was gonna talk about the, if you just go to the store at the DVC. Oh, oh, at or Kidani, at Kidani. They have, they have the too. little ones too, yeah. Yep. Oh, it's nice and soft. Look at that. It's a nice size for the price. Oh my God. Arch Yeah, it's fantastic. I mean, that's a seven for sure. Yeah. The question is, is it fair to call this like a top seven of the festival when it's not really Yeah, a because they dish? need a big one. Well, okay. I think it's better than the little one. You get more cake. The cake is really nice and moist. The Amarola flavor is perfect level of sweetness. This is good. I like that bait, that good. cookie bait, that and chocolate this is cookie. Actually, I like this base better than It's better the than the regular yeah. one. Yeah, absolutely. Uh -huh. So I think it is fair. I This is the best thing we've had today, probably. Okay. Definitely the best dessert. Best, best dessert, today. for sure. But yeah, seven out of seven, must yep. get. Welcome to Spain, situated across from the Germany train exhibit. Wurzburg. Wurzburg. The village of Wurzburg. Where life is like a hurricane here in Wurzburg. Uh, Spain has some new items. Uh, part of Emile's fromage montage is the Spanish charcuterie, which is jamón manchego pan and pan con tomate. Now, I'm gonna be ruined because I like to go to Haleo. That's my favorite restaurant in all of Disney World, if I'm being honest. And all three of those things are phenomenal there, but I have to say all around it's very good. The yeah, cheese, I have to say everything's how you want it to be. For six fifty, I think it's a reasonable yeah. price for what you get. I actually think it's a killer deal for $6.50, yeah. that much Manchego cheese and that much. I mean, we have four of us at this point, and I bet it's enough for each of us to get a few bites. And yeah. No, I highly recommend six. Yeah, it's a six. Yeah. All right. Our paella. Paella, which I will tell you not to get at Haleo, even though it's supposedly the thing they're known for. I think it's the only Squid bad thing ink on the menu. <laughs> Squid ink rice with shrimp, Ooh. bay scallops, and octopus served with garlic aioli. Paella Ooh. negra. The shrimp is not great. Now, if you want good squid next door to your beloved uh, Tole or, um, Dahlia's Toledo, Toledo has my favorite squid on property. The shrimp and the squid are both a little dry for my taste. No. And the rice is not exactly well executed. Octopus. Chicken. This is like a three. <laughs> I'd agree with you. It's three. like a three. And it's you okay. figure, look, you're getting. It smells bad. It does give it does Yeah, it stinks it's a little. It's fragrant. It's $8, which is not terrible, but. All right, Tom, well, another Joffrey's. This is the one by America. And what do we have Coconut here? Coconut banana cream pie latte. So it's kind of Muppets, because we're at Regal Eagle, so it's kind of Muppets themed. Fozzie has banana cream pies in Muppet Vision. Before yeah. it was closed for it. the Banana Monsters Inc. Cream roller coaster. Pie. He's more sugar. Uh, <laughs> comforting com blend. Comforting blend. Espresso, milk, coconut syrup, and banana syrup garnished with whipped cream and toasted coconut flakes. We're real big on the toasted coconut flakes today. Without that finish of banana, it tastes a lot like the first thing that we had today. I think it's better though. It's better. It's, it's more slightly better. It's, it's more, more well balanced. Right, the other one just tasted like syrup and bad coffee. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna, this is like a five. Is that, is that five, what you're five? Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's like a five. It's not bad. Better it than is, the other um, two. It's 649, you can celebrate the Muppets in your own way. And then what were they adding to it, Bailey's? What do they have on Yeah, you can, if you, uh, let me guess, Bailey. Yeah, all of them are just, we'll put Bailey's in it if you want yeah. alcohol. That's the way it works. Just Bailey. Just put Bailey's in anything. But uh, we didn't get Bailey's in this. Okay. But uh, yeah, five. There you go. You know, Eric, I have fond memories of Sundays where my grandma would make a big uh, pot of bolognese and then break out the wonton chips. Every year, the Italy booth does something gross. I think a couple times recently we were like, oh, they okay. have something that's not bad. They had edible was the word used. Mm -hmm. I think on we've first regressed. glance, some of this is some of this looks. We'll find out. I'm we gonna regressed. give it a. I will, I will give it a fair chance. And this not looks even like my CC's eyes. pizza, and this looks like something you feed your dog. 
the, the wonton chip, the Italian, are we starting with the Italian nachos? Sure. Can you describe Italian them? Italian-style nachos. Uh, homemade beef ragu. Would the, the, just they like live, Tom's they Nona. Live in the microwave? Just like Tom's uh, Nona used to make. Beef ragu, pasta chips. Oh, they're pasta? pasta? They're, they're wonton chips. Does this look like pasta? Tomato sauce and dried ricotta cheese. That doesn't. I believe the dry part. All right, come on. No. If you didn't present this to me as it's Italian, and like we let our kids make up the menus this year, I'd be like, all right, good effort, kid. Like, but it's this, like I reheated old taco meat and yeah, just threw chips in it because I didn't have anything else to make for lunch. The seasoning on the meat does not scream Italian at me. It's taco. It's it's, it's like, like taco. School, yeah. school lunchroom taco yeah. meat. Mastacholi or something. Uh, you, you lost one of the... Oh, no. The nacho... There's not enough nachos to begin with. Like, that's an embarrassing portion. How much do nachos cost? How much do chips cost? Come on. A two? I, no, they're getting a one. I'm sorry. This is gross. One. One. No, it's not great. It's not... It's, I mean... Look, maybe if they gave you more chips. We have a tradition. It's, it's like of, a pound and a half of meat we with have, six chips. Yeah. We have a tradition of trash in the Italy booth and most of their efforts. It's, just, it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. This is the uh, Polpatine Toscane, uh, beef meatballs, rosemary focaccia, and pomodoro sauce. This is all school lunch. This is, the sauce is so powerful that it is trying to mask Wait, so the meatball. There's something funky. I'll try their rosemary The bread. meatballs are like over seasoned inside. One. I'd really eat this in a nachos though. I'm not giving them money. No one should give them money. The sauce is terrible. The meatballs are dry. The bread is serviceable. It's a one. All right, one. Another disaster from the Italy booth. They're back to normal. Everyone, they're back. Oh boy. What is that? That looks terrible. Even the dessert Vanilla looks cheesecake. bad. Vanilla cheesecake. Vanilla cheesecake, whipped cream, and fresh strawberry sauce. It's fresh? It's got the little beets in it. The little what in it? The little strawberry seeds. Seeds and stuff. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. Again, like school lunch food. Right? <laughs> That's just what I'm getting from all of this. We can't give that a one if we're. It's $7.75. That's not cheap. That portion is horrible for seven seventy-five. We're getting into the value prop now. Sometimes I think yeah. you have to. I think that's insane. We're fine. It doesn't even have a crust for seven seventy. It's better than a one, but it's, it's not a better. Two, right? Yeah, it's like a two. Two, two it's a chef bad figments. Value. I'm not hopeful for She's the drinks I'm looking at either. She's cakey. Are we biased against the Italy booth? Maybe. But is it well deserved? No, we gave them okay reviews the last couple. They tried. I think yeah. last year we we're like, hey, they tried. You want? You're gonna. I can tell you're gonna need to mix that. Yes, sir. Bellini spritz, fourteen dollars. Oh my God, that's fourteen bucks. It's a little syrupy and sticky and sweet, but it's probably what people want. It's very crisp, dry. Yeah. Super sweet. A little bit too sweet. Three? Sure. How about a three? For the best item we've had. I think we need we might have to stir again. Here's another spoon. This is the Italian inspired blood orange margarita. Where is your spoon? What is to be the spoon? what is the tequila? What is triple the sec and blood orange liqueur? How is that Italian? How was anything we just ate Italian? It tastes like pink lemonade. It's tart. It should have ice in it. It's super tart. That's got to be a pound of sugar in there. It's, it's better than anything else we've had from that booth. Three. It's very tart, though. Three. Three. Yeah, it's like a three. These are passable. One, barely passable. One costumes. chef figment for each stripe on the Italian flag. Three. Uh, flavors of America title the booth is this year. So this is a whole new menu with four different hot dogs and perfect for Labor Day weekend, a molten chocolate cake. <laughs> <laughs> new York style. Which one's the New York style? 
New York, New York. All beef hot dog with sauerkraut. Yep. Sauerkraut. Yep. New York, onion, New York. tomato sauce, and spicy mustard in a brioche bun. Mm. It's solid. <gasps> Bun's good. Nice and fresh and soft. The the link is perfect. Perfectly cooked. It doesn't have a tough exterior. Nice and tender. Good flavor. The onions and everything complement it really well. I'm gonna say six out of seven. This is tastes like one of the oh, hot dog that we can get in Japan. What hot dog in Japan? <laughs> There's a, so many hot dog places in Japan. Yes, you they're known for their hot dog. You didn't. <laughs> What's the next hot dog? Chicago, Chicago style. Eh, Chicago. Uh, 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 oh, because pickle? <laughs> no, pickles, no. No pickles. Please stop. Um, like all beef hot dog with tomato, dill pickle, pickled sport pepper. What is a sport pepper? I think these are green. Oh, sport this one? Sport pepper? Those are freakishly green. They are. Sport pepper. Diced onion, yellow mustard, and Chicago, that Chicago green relish. I mean, I'm not a fan of overloading a hot dog with toppings because that's what happens. Mm -hmm. And you don't end up getting it in your mouth. Um, that being said, it's good. I, I, just because I think that one's a little harder to eat given the toppings, I'm going to give it a five. Um, but how's it but as far as quality, it's as good as the other one. It's just I prefer the toppings on the hot on the New York to this uh, one. Different bun too. Do you see this it after is. mess over? Well, it all fell green, off. Green, green. Got to wash my shirt. Now. All right, the next one. Oh, Carolina style. What? It? All beef hot dog with chili coleslaw and yellow mustard. It looks good. All right, go ahead. I love. I, I love just it. wore the last ones. So you can try it. I love doing? it. You love it. Mm. Why do you love it? I love coleslaw. Chili is good. Mixture of mayo <laughs> type of sauce and chili. Oh yeah, hundred percent. That doesn't look like standard Disney chili either. So it's probably it's a not. good thing. Feeding your clothes. Feeding that your is, parents. Yep. That is very good. Hold on, eh? The chili is excellent. I told you. I'd give that a six. Mm. Southwest style, all beef hot dog wrapped in bacon and warm pinto beans, tomatoes, jalapenos, avocado crema, and queso fresco in a French roll. Can we change up our scores a little bit? I think you I'm going to give... You want. It's your show. I want to... No. I, I would give the Carolina a seven. Mm. It must be. The New York and this one a six. And the uh, Chicago of five is how I would go on rankings. And yeah, they are pretty different because of the bread. The bread and the toppings, a lot changes. Um, but yeah, the, the, if you're going to get one, I think the Carolina style is the is the way to go. The bread is very good on this, though. Don't you? No, like, people might don't believe me because, you know, I've given them, like, crazy scores on a hot, um, corn dog review. But I will tell you if it's good, I'll tell you it's good. If it's bad, I'll tell you it's bad. You may not understand what you're saying. That is true. That is true. <laughs> that's, that's what she means. I don't wish so. Nothing says America like the official dessert of every chain restaurant. It was somewhat gelatinous. Wow. I mean, chocolate lava cake is chocolate lava cake. I've never had a bad one in my life. Wow. This is a good one. It will melt right away. Like, um, This is not the weather for it. But in like six to eight weeks, this will be great. You go watch a concert and then grab this. Uh, I'm gonna give this a six. Rich dark chocolate flavor, the, the icing or whatever's over it is very good. Um, what's the official name of this? Freshly baked chocolate pudding cake with bourbon caramel. Yeah, the bourbon caramel sauce is the perfect accompaniment. Six out of seven. Block and Hans at the American Adventure Pavilion has there to pump you up. We are the this oldest people in Disney vlogging by far. Um, pineapple Chipotle lemonade, Minute Maid lemonade, lemonade with a Chipotle pineapple syrup and a chili lime salt rim. This is non-alcoholic, even though it's from Block and Hans. It's pretty good. Spicy and sweet. This spicy and sweet. Sweet this and is very good. the best drink we've had today. It's not even alcoholic. Very good mix of sweet and spicy, I think. It's... Uh, 
like seventy cents. Oh, is it nine? Oh, you you can add vodka for nine dollars and seventy cents. We could have added oh vodka God, to that it. That might be that might be the, that might be the best nine dollars and seventy cents you can. That spend. might be the item of the festival then. <laughs> Without vodka, though, I think it's, it's still good. the best thing I've drank so today. So it's got to be good with vodka. I love like even thirty seconds after drinking this. That like the spiciness, there's a little warmth, you know, in your mouth yeah. still, and some sweetness on your tongue. Like tahin, with tahin rim. I don't need the tahin rim, but it, it doesn't hurt it. Just they could have served without it. I think. I think it's a six. Yeah, I think six is a good number for this. Yeah, it's I not think, a must with have, vodka, but it's a. I think it's a yeah. must get. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll find out. I'm sure we will. Surely somebody around here snuck some vodka into the park. Excuse me, sir. Do you have a bottle of vodka? <laughs> All right, uh, we have the tiramisu funnel cake with vanilla ice cream uh, topped with chocolate rum sauce, cream cheese, whipped cream, dusted with cocoa and espresso powder for $12. I have to tell you, the funnel cake booth never misses. You know, always you a hit. say that, I don't know how I feel about this one. Yeah, I don't know where to start. There's a little ice cream, a little tiramisu, get in a little funnel tiramisu, cake. tiramisu, man. And try to get all of it in Tiramisu one bite. it up. Another hit, seven. Yeah? Yeah, here, Jason's got silverware. Thank you, sir. The Eric funnel cakes are so simple. I think, it's just, I think they just always, it's just easy for them. Right? That's a funnel cake. Everyone Everybody loves a funnel, funnel, funnel cake. Everyone likes ice cream. Not everyone likes tiramisu, but I think this is certainly better than you would get from the Italy booth. I don't know about seven. It's at least a six. I don't think it's one of the best ones I've had. It's still very good. It's not the best funnel cake that they've had for a festival, but it's pretty darn good. Just like always, it's always good. All right, I'll go seven with you, fine. Seven, there we go. It's good. And we ate it before it melted. Yay, us. They're not done shooting Japan. Here, Jason, try some tiramisu funnel cake. Mm. Uh, Japan, we had to walk far away because the taiko drummers started. Mm -hmm. Which Nana, of course, knew them, because mm -hmm. why would Nana not know them? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Wagyu Tamaki Sushi. Tamaki Sushi. That's what I said. Oh. Handheld sushi with sweet and savory American Wagyu beef, topped with Takana Japanese pickles and oh, spicy Takana. mayo sauce. Takana. Go ahead. I think we have to wrap it. It does say handheld. We have to. I don't know, like, Japan Bruce always makes something that is easily made at home. Nothing is special in this one. It's just rice and the ground beef on top of it, and it just puts some. The ground sugar. beef is well cooked and well seasoned, at least. The rice is cooked fine. It comes across like their take on a American hamburger. That's it's my good. Dinner. Five out of seven. Really? No, you don't think so. As a Japanese, you have chocolate out. on your lip. <laughs> As a Japanese, I'm just gonna give it two out of seven. As a Japanese. As a Japanese. Okay, don't forget I'm Japanese. All right, eel tamaki sushi. Handheld sushi with grilled eel, egg crumbles, cucumber, and pickled daikon radish served with eel sauce. That's not bad. It's decent. It's cooked well, it's not chewy, it's not fishy. The sauce gives it a nice flavor, like a sweet. It don't. They like to, you know what, like when we try to sell something to, ja I mean, American people here, yeah. we make everything sweet. But that's not all the Japanese food. No, most is very subtle. Everything has very subtle flavors in Japan. Like little tiny flavor because we yeah. are sensitive to everything. We can yeah. smell, taste, everything. Uh, what are, what, what are is the this? Drinks? What I are you going to give them? Five. Okay. It's not a lot of eel, but eels, you know, eels eel, eel, eel ain't cheap. Yes, I hear you. Uh, Kyoho grape. Kyoho grape. Kyoho grape sour. What are the sour? Kyoho black grape cocktail with Japanese vermouth and sochu. Hi, kanpai. That's delightful. Yeah. It's light and refreshing. Like, this is the best. Little sweet. This, but it tastes like a haiju, right? The like yeah. haiju grape. Yeah. It does taste like a, <laughs> like a grape candy or a grape soda for kids. Yeah. Um, that's what I like about it. But it also has alcohol. Yeah. This is a six. I like this a lot. Only six. Not Easy gonna make to it drink. Seven? No, I don't think it's that good. All right. But it's very good. I would recommend. Harpis. And then the. Uh, Kyoho drink, this is kalpiko karpisu. with... What is it? Karpisu. In karpisu. Japanese, it's kalpis, karpisu. But it sounds like piss. That's why they make it karpiko. They changed the name for us. Oh, for American? Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it sounds like cow piss in Japanese, but it's kalpiko here. 
uh, with what is Calpico? Porkisu. It is like some sort of milk drink, but it's not yeah, real milk. I know. I don't like it. <laughs> uh, with fragrant, mellow, Kyoho black grape flavor. That's super oh. sweet. That is essentially the kid version of oh. that. Very, very sweet. It's really sweet. But still like grape candy. Yes, it's still haiju. Yeah. Haiju um, grape flavor. I'll give that a five, but I think if you have young kids who want a sweet drink, I think that'll do the trick. I think it's a good recommendation. I would like to put them in the, a lot of ice. Ice would be good. It yeah. does need to, I feel like it needs to be colder. Ice would be a good addition to that. Yeah. Yes. So overall, pretty pretty solid Japan booth this year. Happy to hear. I got to go zamo. I zamo stop. Let me move this out. All the way, the way in another. Greece. We have the Greek melon lime aid. Oh. All right. Uh, it comes with uh, Cleos Mastiha spirit, all red melon uh, aperitif de Provence, uh, pearl vodka, and lime sour mix. Okay. I got you a straw. How about that? No, this isn't a You're straw. You're gonna drink it like this? Yeah. It comes presented with some, you know, little wilted leaves on top. Mm. That aperitif, you know what I'm talking about, that little... It's got a nice, note. unique flavor for the festival, right? There are not a lot of minty, or like you're alluding to, like that, I don't know, palate cleansy type yeah. cocktail, right? Yeah. I like that after what we've, like all the mix of food we just had, I think that's a nice break. I think Refreshing. it's done pretty well. Yeah. It's not, it's not something I would normally order. No. And I probably wouldn't get it again. Only no? because there's other things nearby that I prefer. Okay. For France, let me see. Ah, there. Uh, we have the Moyo or Oyo, Camelé et le Fromage Chevé. It's an egg Moyo with goat cheese and caramelized onions. Is that this? I assume that would be that. that's this thing. It looks like kind of like a quiche sort of thing. Oh, it doesn't have a ton of flavor, but the texture is. Nice to I mean, it tastes like cheese, salt tastes and like cheese, and butter, salt and which cheese is very French. It's good. I don't know. It's like a four. Yeah. Slightly above average. Oh, I, I'd give it a five. I kind of like it. All right, well, right, we'll tell the writers to do it a five. All right, what interesting French words are you pronouncing for us next? Brioche au escargot, which is escargot brioche. With garlic and parsley that cream. That would be this uh, green thing here. I miss the croissant. They used to have an escargot, escargot. croissant. That was quite good. I like that. So I'm sure this will be somewhere in the vicinity. I'm not sure how to eat it. I'm going to cut it. it. I think I'm going to cut it. I like that. It's. I like the flavor, though. We somehow ate the whole filling, and now I can't take a picture of the middle. There is almost no escargot filling in there. Because I didn't get a whole lot, and you didn't get a whole lot, and it's gone. It's good, though. I mean, again, it's that little piece of grit. Also, real garlic, yeah. the garlic, garlic forward. It has a lot more flavor Buttery. than the uh, quiche thing. I'm gonna go five. Yeah, this. I'll give it a five. What's next? We have some sort of creme brulee looking thing. Let me guess, it's creme brulee. I would guess. Any high school creme musical brulee, man, Creme brulee, mang, et passion et la confiture. It's mango passion creme brulee with fruit combo. Oh, there's fruit compote in here somewhere? Mm -hmm. You know what's This weird? would be better without the fruit compote, I think. It would, right? Because what it did was it took a very good creme brulee and it made it taste like Yo Play yogurt. Yeah, it's somehow the fruit It looks like creme brulee, it. but it just tastes like Yo Play. I, I think it could have been like a five, but I think it's like a four. Yeah. Nice four. Yeah. Right. Uh, where to start with these? This one is going to overflow on us, so we're going to have to well, drink it before we hold there. it up to the camera. Frozen French Cosmo. Frozen French Cosmo. Vodka, Cosmo. Grey Goose, La Citron Vodka, Grand Marnier, and Cranberry Juice. So it's a Grand Marnier slushy, basically, but with... Actually, no, so Grey the goose. regular slushies that have the Grey Goose is lemon and the Grand Marnier is orange. Yeah. This, they have both of them plus cranberry. Yeah. This is an interesting idea. And I'm behind it. It's what people want. It's what people want. Give them what they want. It is sweet. It's sweet, but not overly. It's um, cold. It's like cranberry and vodka. And it's cold. It's nice. I mean, this is the weather for it today. You could taste that Grand Marnier in there. Oh, yeah. 
I, I like think that. I think it looks great. I mean, it was overflowing when it got here. It kind of made a mess on the table because it. We've drank quite a bit out of this, and you can see it's still relatively full. So careful with the portions on that. Six. Yeah, that's a six. I like that very much. Okay. Now this. Uh, this is a cocktail au jus at Haut Fraisiers. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it comes with. I'm going to try to put a bunch of this rosé d'argent, strawberry gin, cranberry juice, and dull pineapple juice. This looks like, I'm not going to lie, it looks like dirty mop water. It looks like that Indiana Jones drink from Hollywood Studios uh, I had at the, the restaurant. Yeah, the, store. this, it just looks like mop water. I, it does not look good. If you eat with your eyes, you're not going to like this. Fortunately for us, we eat with our mouth, so hopefully... But I mean, the looks are a one. The taste is like a three. Oh, it tastes way better than I thought it was going. To. I don't think it's as good as the frozen Cosmo thing here, but it's it tastes like I said, it tastes better. Look, I wish I wish it had more ice in it. I think that's the American in me, I guess. But yeah, what do you I think? The, it's you're getting the strawberry and the cranberry and pineapple, right? It's the getting, pine, I'm getting the pineapple. You're getting the mix of them. It's the pineapple is a lot stronger than the cranberry or strawberry yeah. in there. Um, it's way better than it looks. I'd say five. A five? It's way more drinkable. It's kind of refreshing because it's fruit juices. Yeah, you're more apt to like this one than me, so I will yeah. defer to your five because I think that probably does our guests a little, or our viewers a little bit more of a service because yeah. I, it's not something I would get again. But it's not. It's certainly better than it looks. So five it is. Yeah. Good job, France. Oh, yeah, pretty solid. All right, you ready, Thomas? If I can find these menus. So we'll start with the UK beer beer cart. Yeah, because I don't have that they one. They call it a cart. It has like a trellis and everything. I don't know if I'd call it a cart, but whatever. Uh, that is going to be the strawberry basil cocktail, which is forged gin, St. Germain elderflower liqueur, Seagram's ginger ale, and strawberry and basil syrups. Oh, duck is coming by. And it needs to be broken up a little. It's got a... That's a Joffrey straw. Part. You can't put a Joffrey straw in that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I will remove the Joffrey straw, which is actually better. Better, right? Ooh. Like I don't like gin, so I'm not drawn to gin drinks. Yeah, we may not be. The it's right not. People. It's not bad. It's not my jam. It's definitely not as offensive as like that first Mexican. No, drink. no, it's middle of the road. I yeah. just think it's a preference thing, especially you add gin and elderflower and basil together. I'm just yeah. you normally like, nah, I'm good. I'll try something else. I don't know. It's like a four. Yeah, somewhere in that zone. Three Probably or four. about a four. Yeah. All right. We have our fourth Joffrey's. This is the last one. Last Joffrey's. This completes the Joffrey's this Infinity. This is the, uh, another. They're big on mocha lattes and coconut today. This is the hazelnut mocha latte, a nutty blend of espresso, milk, hazelnut syrup, and dark chocolate sauce garnished with whipped cream and a chocolate drizzle. Non-alcoholic. You can, of course, add Bailey's for... Yeah. What, so you had like seven bucks to it or something to get Bailey's? Be yeah. sure to hit the audio button on the video right now so you can get Nana's alternative commentary <laughs> track. Uh, everybody wants Nana's running. I do. I want Nana's. I like her more than me. This is my favorite of them. Of the of the Joffrey's drinks, this is my favorite. Uh, with alcohol, this is going to taste a lot like Tipsy Ducks. Yeah, if it had alcohol, it might taste more like Tipsy Ducks. They have, what, Jim It's Beam like a and... non-alcoholic yeah. one, so it's this rich... It's very rich. Like chocolate sauce flavor, like a Hershey's. On a normal day, I could crush this. On a festival day, I'm... Yeah. it's a three-sipper, which is pretty good for me. It's good. I think it's like a five. Four? Yeah, sure. The best, I think it's I the like best the of the Joffrey's. One. I like the American The banana cream pie. Okay. Tom likes the banana cream pie one definitely better. Definitely not the I first like the, two. No. Don't get the first two. I would say the last two. If you're doing Joffrey's, yeah. America and uh, in between UK and Canada, those are, those are the best two. Yeah. Right. Okay. Swirled showcase. We have... Not an ice cream cone this time. No, it is a liquid nitrogen frozen sweet potato mousse with caramelized pecan and maple Ooh. caramel sauce. So they, would they right there, you can watch them make it. They dip it in the liquid yeah. nitrogen. It gives it a little bit of better freeze. Hopefully it stands up a little bit longer. Yeah, nitro see stuff. how it's like nice and firm now? They even kind of smash, I saw them kind of smash it. It's so weird. This is the pumpkin spice latte for the summertime, right? This is like... It tastes like a weird consistency pumpkin pie. It's so good. It's so good, though. It is excellent. The it's, nutmeg, oh a lot God. of nutmeg. It just tastes like frozen pumpkin pie. It tastes like frozen things. But because it's nitrogen frozen, it doesn't. It's not like ice cream where it starts melting. And it's really soft. There's some firmness to it. Seven. I love it. Yeah. Seven. I agree. I mean, 
Not only seven. Best thing I've eaten today. You think so? Yeah. Well, best thing I've eaten today. I can't stop eating it. That says something. Though. All right. This is Forest and Field. This is new this year. Uh, this is uh, first item, autumn chili with bison, lamb, and pork belly, root vegetables, jalapeno cornbread, smoked cheddar, and creme fraiche. And the cornbread's real sweet and it counters yeah. spicy. But it's spicy too, it has that jalapeno kick, right? This is really good, it's just hard for me in this August when it's this 98 This is the worst degree. weather for this. This is a seven though. I think it's a seven too. Oh my goodness, I, there's a lot of spice. You're thinking it's the spice in the cornbread? There's, no, there's a lot of spice in yeah, the chili. Yeah, there's spice in the chili. It's real party and meaty. It's a nice portion. Look at the size of that bowl. That might be the biggest bowl I've seen. Yeah, it was festival. very hot. I was burning my hand through Look this cardboard bowl. That. So that's, This is the usual festival size bowl. Right, if you're coming to the festival for small bites, this ain't it. What's next? Let's do the ravioli. Pumpkin mascarpone ravioli with sage brown butter, pecorino cheese, and hazelnut praline. I need a knife for this ravioli, which is a weird thing to have to say, but. Again, fall flavors and it's 90 degrees, so it's a little yeah, out your of fall season, but in four to tingly. six weeks. In four to six weeks, is it a seven? It's, or is I it a six? It it's is. a high six, I low seven. It's a seven. I think it's a seven. That sage crap. brown Two butter flavor, row, yeah. the cheese, the, the bite crunch? of the cheese, oh. the crunch. That pumpkin flavor is What is perfect. the crunch? What are those? Praline. What? Oh, that's praline? Okay. Hazelnut praline. That's a seven. Praline, Without a doubt. praline, I don't know how to say it anymore. This is the burrata with seasonal fall fruit, spiced pecans, apple puree, and fig vinaigrette. Oh, I love fig. I'll let you rank it because I just, all I think, all, I'm just repulsed by sort of the texture and blandness of the cheese, and I'm getting all the other tastes individually. I don't think it's that bland. All right. Six. Wow. It's not a seven. It's not as good I, as those. I, I will I think this defer is to you on this because it's, it's not my thing. For a different audience than those two dishes do. I like it because it's different. I don't, I don't know that I've ever had a fall burrata. I don't know that that's a thing I'm familiar with, a fall, fall themed burrata. burrata. Yeah, apple puree, essentially, yeah. I would still say that for the savory dishes, those are two of the best that we've had all day. All day. Those are going to be in the top seven, no doubt. Okay. Um, this is very good, though, too. So all around, a really strong booth. Please. Welcome back to the worst day of our lives. Jill is here now. Thank you, Jill, because Eric can't eat anymore like I'm doing well. Uh, it's not the worst day of my life yet because I have only just begun um, swooping in at the end. To, I'm like the relief pitcher, I'm the relief it's taster. It's too late. The starter, I'm out for the yeah. season after yeah. this. So, uh, Bramblewood Bites, this is going to be, we, we came here into the big ugly building. Um, to have air condition and be nice. comfortable. But um, so we took stuff from the two boots that are out in that like garden area they just built out behind Imagination. One of them, Bramblewood Bites, we have first up a grilled cider brined uh, pork tenderloin with fennel apple slaw and apple cider gastric. You know the food's good when I am mentally and physically defeated, but I'm still giving a positive review. Like I am in such a bad mood, but that is delicious. It's really nice. So the pork is, I mean, it's its incredibly tender. It's, it's very perfectly juicy. cooked, yeah. Um, it's like just barely done, it's not overcooked. And all that gives a sweetness to it, which is perfect. And then the fennel gives it this nice crunch. There's like a little bit of spicy, like I get a little heat in the back. Oh, sure, yeah. I don't know. Is that, it peppery? I see a little pepper, yeah. I think. Yeah, it's a little peppery. And okay. then um, this is an apple cider gastric. So it's like, it gives it a little sweetness. It's really nice. I will say, if you're turned up by apple flavor with it, it's not really apply. It's more just a sweetness. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's just that little bit of hint. You know, like pork chops and applesauce. Yeah. It's that kind of vibe, but like sophisticated. Six seventy-five. That's a that's a win. I'm gonna give that a seven. Yeah, that's for six seventy-five. Yeah. That's a really good deal. You get a nice chunk of meat. It's good. Okay. Uh, next up is the grilled bison with butternut squash puree, roasted mushrooms, and huckleberry gastric. Huckleberry. That's my favorite Hanna Barbera character. It's certainly not bad. I don't know if huckleberry is what I want with that. Mm -mm. They're, on their own, they're very pleasant flavors. I don't know that I like them together. I feel like the bison's kind of bland. Maybe. Which is not what I would expect for a bison. Like, you expect it to be a really rich meat, like yeah. almost gamey. Instead of the, all the different ingredients being pulled together, they're all kind of 
fighting yeah. to get away from each other. Three? Yeah, no, definitely not more than that. Okay. I would, I would not, there's, I've only been here a bit and I've already tried way better stuff than this. You showed up at a good booth. The last booth was very good. I made the right choice. Cast iron roasted Brussels sprouts with root vegetables, dried cranberries, candied pecans, and maple bourbon glaze. I think there was a sale on pecans this year. I believe the Cellier had a, if not similar in flavor palette, but I believe they had a Brussels sprout dish, or maybe it was cauliflower actually, that had like nut, um, like candy sort nuts. I'm looking for it. But not even just candy nuts, but like um, brittle. Yeah. Like a nut brittle in it. I really like that. That's always a good combination. This is very good. I assume this is a vegan dish. Does it have the leaf? Uh, it does not have the uh, leaf. Something in, in here is not. No. So vegetarian you can have it, but not vegan. Yeah. That's a shame. This is definitely at least a six. I wouldn't even lean towards this being a seven. I'd go six. Yeah. Spiced apple old-fashioned inspired cocktail with Boyd and Blair rum. It's old-fashioned inspired. They well, couldn't legally call it an old fashioned. Well, it doesn't have whiskey in it, it has rum. Yeah. Oh, it's definitely spicy. Yeah. Like it tastes, that tastes like it might be a spice rum. I don't know, that's it not bad. It says spiced apple old yeah. fashioned. I like it. Yeah, five? It's, I don't feel like it's, I feel like it's more like a cold hot toddy than a yeah. old fashioned, but yeah, I'd give but it But again, five. fall flavor, we keep getting hit with fall flavors. Yeah. For an event that starts in August, although I guess they pushed it out of July, so we should be somewhat thankful. It makes more yeah. sense. At least it's like almost the last, like the like third, second, third to last day of August. Yeah. Milled and mold, which is how I feel Snacks. at this point. Uh, this was next to that over again in that garden by imagination. Uh, we have two items from here. We have the Borson fig and balsamic cheesecake with fig jam and pomegranate. Well, there's a Let's do the savory item first. It's weird. I don't think this is savory either. Oh, it's not. It's, it's pear a pear and almond yeah. frangipane pate brisé. I assume pate brisé is the name for whatever it's this clean. little sort of like mezzaluna vibe. This empanada. It's okay. I don't taste yeah. any almond. Like frangipane should be a very like distinct sweet almond flavor. You don't think you're getting that from the from the crust? I don't. I don't taste it really at all. I'm really getting it on the back end. Oh. Try another. Try another bit of that side. I want to save that side for a photo. Because it's not warm. Like I think it would be nice if it was a little bit toasty. Although yeah. it's too hot for that most of the time. They've been yeah. sitting there a little bit, which yeah. happens sometimes. I'm gonna say four. It's, it's not, not bad. That's, I was just gonna say it's not it's bad. It's forgettable. It's forgettable. Yeah. This looks good though. This is this looks really pretty. the Borson registered trademark fig and balsamic cheesecake with a fig jam and pomegranate. There's like big hunks of fig going on in there. Go ahead. All right. You could probably just put the fork in that. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. It's really soft. Yeah. It's really soft. It's from the Disney Flavor Lab. It's a Flavor Lab special. Ooh. So I've seen many of these in this shape. They have that mold and they want to get it is a they mold. want to get yeah. their use out of They're it. They're either the moose dome or the weird Bermuda Triangle item. That's really good. Oh wow. That's really good. Really delicate yeah. mousse. Yeah, it's so cheesecake like, consistency. Airy. I mean like it's not like a dense heavy cheesecake. No. It's very almost like mousse. Yeah. Really rich flavor, like mousse consistency cheesecake in texture and flavor, yeah, right? Yeah. But like you get that little, like Borson is like goat cheese. You get that little hint of like tang from the goat cheese, yeah. but it's not strong. It's not overpowering. And then the fig and the the crust and the little bits of pecan. Counters again. are really nice. So. Yeah. No, this is good. Six. Yeah. Yeah. It's a six out of seven. I like way that way a better lot. than the yeah definitely get, pear and get panada. <laughs> The air panada from oh Macetizers, which is here in the Big Ugly building. Um, new for Macetizers, even though it's a new venue, there's only one new item. Uh, the cheesesteak macaroni and cheese with shaved beef, peppers, and onions, and breadcrumbs. Interesting. All right. Dive on in. Like, you get the nice sort of, like... I mean, you're from the Philly-ish yeah. area. The peppers are actually really nice. Yeah. Like they're like a little bit roasty. They're like they have a nice like a little bit of tang without being hot. The 
cheesesteak meat is actually like thinly sliced and like pretty well cooked. For counter service, it's solid. This isn't bad at all. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would I would try this. Yeah. Six. Yeah. If you want better mac and than cheese, I thought. Yeah, I, absolutely. I, I didn't have high hopes for this and it definitely yeah. exceeded my expectation. You ready for some Is this all shot? Favorites? Yes. Best, oh, cool. Festival, festival favorite. It's a Panic at the so Disco are, song. Is it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Tom, I feel like we keep trying things and then more stuff just keeps showing up on the table. The worst is this is deja vu because these are items we had in previous years. Because these that's are what, festival favorites. Although right? I am happy that that guy's back. Eric's happy that this guy's back. Yeah. Um, so first up are the barbecue pork rinds. With I think that's like a pimento cheese. I don't have a full description. Maybe you do in there. Oh yeah, let me check. Uh, no, it's not in here. Wait, did this barbecue come pork from? rinds with pimento cheese? Oh oh gosh, I looked right at it. Yes, barbecue pork rinds with pimento cheese. It is in fact mm -hmm. pimento cheese. This is not a thing I'm excited about trying. I'm not like a pork rind person. These are good though. I like the barbecue seasoning yeah. a lot. But they are at the end of the day five pork rinds and cheese for several dollars so yeah it doesn't feel like a good value no but people like pork rinds right I mean, and they like cheese dip it's not bad that's what it is yeah okay get this out of here do we need to blow read it, it blow it away i don't i feel bad giving it a high rating five i feel bad well I wouldn't it's give good. it a five. The pimento cheese dip is real good. It is good. The pork rinds, I think they need to give, with that size pimento dip, there needs to be more pork rinds. Yeah. And I'm accounting for the one that they lost in the breeze. <laughs> <laughs> Next lime? up, we have the key lime tart. There is no further description. They're savory. Do you want to do your savory dish yeah, first? Okay. Before we have three dessert items? We have kielbasa and potato pierogies with caramelized onions and sour cream. Um, so I'm going to be super critical of this because I am Polish and I grew up eating my grandmother's homemade pierogies. They're pre-made frozen pierogies. They're comforting. They're not bad. They feel it's like not, good comfort yeah. food. Again, I mean, not for this weather. I'm not coming to an Epcot festival expecting like handmade pierogies yeah. that taste like grandma's. So, You wow. wouldn't believe. There is a milkshake that absolutely has like an apple pie on top. It, that's amazing. That just arrived. Yeah. That is wild. That's pretty amazing. Okay. All right. I would. I'm gonna say a five. Oh, you went higher than I did. It, they're they're not bad. They're just. Okay. I'll go five with you. They're not bad. The kielbasa is fine. This is yeah. If you do encounter a cold night here, I think it's another decent option. Yeah. And it's like substantial. Like you you they're eat heavy. this and you feel like you've got some food in your. It's good because I just haven't eaten a lot today. All right, key lime tart. Yeah. Another flavor lab special. Look at that shape. I don't know. I'm not a big key lime person. For those of you who like your key lime tart, extraordinarily tart, I think you're going to love that. So it's yellow inside, which means it's real key lime and not like fake green food yeah. coloring key lime. No, this is pretty good. I don't even really like key lime. This is pretty good. Very tart, but, but again, yep. the real deal. Yep. The, just the right amount of sweetness from the, the topping that's slightly toasted, lightly toasted. Um, six out of seven, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. Right. These boys are back. The boys are back in town. You should just, just dive in. Frozen s'mores, chocolate milkshake, and marshmallow syrup topped with mini marshmallows and a graham cracker. So that's the non-alcoholic one for the kids. It's nice and chocolatey. It does taste <laughs> right? It wasn't me. Thank you. It tastes like there's alcohol in it. I hope not. It would be a very interesting mistake. Or am I confused and the souvenir cup comes with the non-alcohol? No, it's, it definitely says on the Green menu, frozen cracker. s'mores, non-alcoholic. But Marcia, that's not Why does it and taste like not, alcohol? There's not an alcoholic version. But you've had enough alcohol. Everything. But I haven't had that. I've had literally one sip and it tasted boozy to me. You know why? That mixture, I think, emulates Bailey's a little bit. Yeah, it does. It tastes like Bailey's. And so we think we're drinking Bailey's, yeah. but it's not alcoholic. Or, yeah. Yeah. Which, you know, kind of good. This is the old standard. 
Uh, this is the Irish milkshake, Guinness Stout, Bailey's Original Irish Cream Liqueur, and Vanilla Ice Cream. Eric's happy this is back. I think everyone is. That's one of my favorite. That used to be the one. I don't, like when we come to review every year, I get everything new. I don't repeat items. There are like three things in history I used to repeat regularly. One was ghost pepper tilapia, which was Flower and Garden years ago. Two was the spicy hot dog, Flower and Garden. And three was... The Bailey Shake. The Bailey Shake. It's, I feel like it's just as good as it used to be. Oh, that's strong. Yeah. That's very strong. Yeah. It's very good. That's a seven. I mean, it's always been a seven. It's, it can't not be a seven. Ooh. And Here, I Eric, mean, drink the rest. To, to like reassure you, it's, it's my favorite thing, and I'm not sure I can finish. It's it. just as good as it always has been. Actually, it's a little stronger today, and I like it. It is. It is a little potent. Maybe I'm just a done. <laughs> you just need so something to ease today. the pain. All right, the final three items. First stop, Earth Eats. This is going to be red wine braised beef short rib with goat cheese polenta, puntanesca sauce, my favorite word to say, and shaved pecorino and petite herbs. Okay, I'm just going to tell you I love everything in this dish. I love, puntanesca is like my favorite because it's full of olives and capers and it's very salty and spicy. I love goat I just cheese. like to say puntanesca. I love, I love polenta, I love short rib, I love all the things. Oh, wow. Short rib's a little dry. Yeah. But I really like all the accompaniment. Yeah. I would actually just get the polenta and the puttanesca sauce in a bowl and forget the short rib. I kind of want to try it again because meat like that is, it depends when you come, yeah. right? That may have sat there for a while. It may have not cooked yeah. right. You it's, know. Still, it's not terrible. It's just, it's, it's, it's a little dry. dry. But it's not like, it's at least it's not so dry that it's like chewy. No. But yeah. No, it's tender. It's, it's just dry. The putanesca is a really nice putanesca. If that short rib was tender and juicy, this, this is a seven. Yeah. I think it brings it down to like a five. But I would definitely, I would get this again. Like also, I like want to try is, it again and give them the benefit yeah. of the doubt. This is practically like an entire meal. For like one festival dish, this it's is big. like a meal. It's, it's But big. it's awesome. Uh, next up, lemon poppy seed cake with lemon icing. Okay. So if you have a drug test coming up at work, maybe... <laughs> Do they still do that anymore? I, don't know. It's not really a I thing. just remember that from Seinfeld that she eats the lemon poppy yeah. bagels yeah. and then can't pass the drug test yeah. and then she doesn't get to go to see the Bushmen. It just... Oh right, with see the, the crazy. Oh. Like the icing is like just the perfect amount of icing to go it's with not, the cake. It's not. It's wet. The icing, like it's fresh. Yeah, and it's so light and fluffy. Like it's super not, moist cake. Oh, it's really. I don't. I'm not a big like lemon cake person, but this is really good. Yeah. Yeah. That's a seven for me. I would get this again. Yeah, seven. Man. I love it. I would have that again. It's really good. Nana. Nana's name does mean seven in Japanese. It does. Ichi, me, I can't Zen. believe this This has a pie on top. <laughs> I don't know, pie it does. Else. This is a cake pie that looks like an apple. It's, yeah. It's good though, like that. Go ahead. Should I go with the cake pop? Yeah, we get, take a piece of that. It's like the Starbucks, they're always like raw inside. They're good though. It's okay. Uh, I don't feel like there's a ton of flavor to it. I know it's red velvet, so it's yeah. not gonna have a ton of flavor, but I'm not sure what I just drank. Like, it's not milk. It tastes like you're drinking like, like cream. marshmallow cream. Or it like tastes apple. like apple pie. Yeah, it's like this weird creamy consistency. It's, yeah, it's not like milky or like, it's, it's a it's Willy very, Wonka creation. Yeah, it is. It is a Willy Wonka drink. I don't understand what this is. Caramel apple milkshake. Artisanal okay. gelato. <laughs> gelato. Oh. Pate brise. Whipped cream, candy apple cake, and caramel drizzle. So what I'm learning is that pate brise is like a fancy word for basically like pie crust. It is an elevated milkshake for Disney World, absolutely. It's just, like, it's not bad. I'm not trying to it's say it's good. bad. It it's good. It's weird. It tastes like, it's cream that just tastes like you're drinking an apple pie. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty good. Yeah. I think people will like it. And, like, the The apple, presentation is fantastic. Yeah. It takes this a great photo. Absolutely. A bit, super, Prettiest item of the event. Super Instagrammable. Yeah. 
give them a six. They tried. Yeah. I mean, it's it's and uh, if there's some sort of like evil magic going on in that whatever that cream stuff is. Evil magic pie milkshake. Well, that's it. That's the festival. I'm happy to... I keep telling myself I'm not going to do this, and then it happens. Oh. We have news tonight in like an hour and a half or something? Yeah. Something like that. It's relatively yeah. soon. That's a problem. Hopefully, but, uh, hopefully Tom makes it. We could do our top seven on news tonight. We'll do it another. We'll do it tomorrow or something. Um, if you made it through the video, sincerely thank you. Please hit the like button and please subscribe. If you made it this far, you've probably already done that, but I'll mention it anyway. If you'd like to support this and probably my medical bills that are about to follow, you can join the WDWNT Interglobe Society at patreon.com slash WDWNT. And as well, you can shop at uh, WDWNT.shop. It's a carousel product. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to go die now. Tom needs to rest. I have no time to rest. I'll be in my trailer. Um, but I will say, overall, a strong year. I mean, there was not a lot that was super bad. There was a lot of really good. And a lot came back that people really liked. So I think it's a particularly strong year for food and wine. But I will say, something someone brought up to me as we were walking around is that the axis of power in the park has seemingly shifted. There are a lot less booths back there and a lot more up in Future World or World Celebration, World Discovery, and World Nature, if you will. Um, so you're going to spend a little more time, I think, eating up here, honestly, than you will be back there. But that's uh, good because there are places to sit here. They built a lot of seating, and so it's it makes a lot of sense, right? A lot of this expansion ended up being shaded seating areas. and. It's good for enjoying festival food, especially in August, September, and probably a good amount of October. So, um, But overall, a good year. We're going to do a separate video with our top and bottom seven of the new items, so stay tuned for that. And uh, we'll see you real soon, hopefully, if I survive. Hi, surprise, it's me, Wendy. And I am here with the completer prize for the Emile's Fromage Montage event here at the Food and Wine Festival. So this is a prize that you can get at Shimmering Sips. It's free, but you have to get five stamps from the items listed in the festival material as things you can get with a Meals Fromage Montage. As you can guess from the name, it's usually stuff that has cheese in it. So at the menus, just look for the little cheese symbol and those will be the items you can get a stamp for for this. So I'm told that this item is a Blueberry and vanilla swirled ice cream with a piece of cheesecake on top. Sounds pretty yummy to me. Let's give it a try. Okay, it's pretty good. It's blueberry and vanilla ice cream. The cheesecake is nice and moist. Um, it's light. It's refreshing. The cheesecake piece isn't too big. It's not going to weigh you down if you've already eaten a ton of stuff at the festival. I would say if you get the five stamps just with things that you're doing naturally already, it's worth it to come get it. I mean, it comes in this nice little cup that you can keep as a souvenir. I would not uh, waste my time, my calories, my money trying to get the five stamps to get it unless you really want this cute cup. So thanks for joining us here at the Food and Wine Festival with your team from WDWNT and See you real soon.